Good afternoon, everyone. This is Anka Metcalf, and this is the Futures Market Outlook for the week starting with April 21st, 2019. This is the Imidy Dow weekly chart. Last week, we had a continuation higher and set a new high for this year uh, into the Imidy Dow. Still, we have room for a progression higher back into the 26,700, uh, an area that has been visited. The last time it was visited was actually last year in September. And from this prior pivot high back in January, when that volatility started to uh, to step in, to, to actually step into the markets. All right, so this is from January 29. Let's take it down notch to the daily chart. Daily chart after a coil around the 26,400 area, we managed to break out higher above the resistance that was set throughout the whole entire week. And Friday was the day when we actually progressed higher. Uh, like I said, we still have room into the 26,700 and 26,800. And then it's less than 500 points away from establishing a new high. 27,000 is the new high that was set last year in October. So the last year in October when all this mess started, this, this, aggressive, uh, uh, this aggressive pullback and also this volatility. We're very steady, uh, we're getting very steady up. The one thing that I really like is that the price is trading above the 10 exponential, is trading above the 20, above the 50, and above the 200 simple moving average. We had two double bottoms here earlier in March, uh, March 8th and back into March 26th, a revisit of these uh, 200 SMAs. We have a nice golden cross here. The price is ready for a projection higher, but let's not be complacent. We do, uh, we are uh, just beginning early earning season and uh, uh, next week so this this upcoming week is going to be uh, by uh, it's going to be really busy uh, uh, with a lot of stocks that will, are due to report earnings all right let's take it down to some actionable trading ideas that uh, the markets are going to open on Sunday uh, April 21st and uh, let's see what we have going on just a note here, uh, the European markets will be closed, so things are going to be a little bit thin. Back in full throttle mode, it's going to be back into Tuesday. All right, so um, as far as we're looking at the one hour chart, we have this really nice extended move that has started with a revisit, again, off the 200 simple moving average, double bottom uh, from Monday, a revisit into Monday and full throttle back up into the 26,600. I mean, take a look at this massive run that the market had in the overnight trading session. A uh, little bit sloppy uh, continuation higher, but nonetheless continuing higher back into the 26, uh, almost 600. You could see here 26,599, so very close to that area. Remember, the next target is 682, so pay very close attention to that 680. Still has some juice in it. Pullback areas, if we take the price back into the 26,500, this is the first minor support level. And if we get a rotation off of this point, this may be another turnaround point for a continuation higher back into the 550 and back into the 600 for the day trader. Uh, also, if we get a pullback back into the 26 to 450, this is still gonna be a pullback buy zone because we have a huge, huge support level here. We have minor support, we have minor support, plus we have the moving averages, nice confluence zone for the price to rotate off of these levels. Let's continue with the mini S&P 500 and we're going to take it back into the weekly charts. Uh, the weekly charts set a new high compared to the prior week. So we're launching higher. Notice how the price is trading above this January high right here. So we're noticing a little bit of relative strength in the mini S&P because it already digested this prior high from January and the Dow still has, uh, still has room into that resistance level and that is that 682 level that we need to pay attention to. So the m and uh, S&P is a little stronger, pushing a little bit higher, and it's actually really fastly approaching this prior high into the 2947 that was set on September 17th. You can see it right here from this high. Uh, Doji here, so we're not gonna be complacent. Uh, keep in mind, we're getting a bit extended into the m and S&P from the support zone. We have uh, a really strong support area into the 2820. This is from the weekly level. Should we pull back, we still have 10 points that we may retrace back and the next turnaround level may be into this level into the 
2820. Let's not forget that we pretty much have hovered into the 2820 for a very long time and now we're uh, trading above it. So this is going to be a pretty good shelf for continuation higher. The daily chart, you can see that we have not made a new high. Uh, the m and &E Dow is playing catch up right now, but the high is at 29.23.75 uh, and we still have not made a new high right here. So we're still coiling around this 2900. 2900 so far still platform of support. Uh, and as long as we're holding this 10 EMA, also confluence area here, we could still see a breakout higher. If we break throughout this upcoming week above 2920, we will probably release more buying pressure that may take the price higher. And we have a nice tradable void all the way into the 2950 zone. All right, some actionable trading ideas for the day traders that are looking to trade the overnight markets. Here we go. So as you can see here, the uh, M&E S&P is lagging and uh, it is hitting this area of resistance. See these prior lows right here? These are impacting the price and creating uh, a ceiling of resistance at the 2910 zone. We break above the 2910 zone, we have more buying pressure that can take the price back to, into the 2920. So we have about 10 points to work with here, but it's the matter of holding this area. So if we get a pullback back into the 2900, this is going to be seen as another pullback buy area around this zone right here. The more we hover around the 10 area, we can see a progression higher, but pullbacks into the 2900 are still going to be viable. Let's continue with NASDAQ. And let's take it back into the weekly charts. Weekly charts, new high, 77.33.5 uh, is the new high for the week in the mini &E NASDAQ. Currently closed, 77.15. Uh, it does have room for a progression higher. You could see this high right here uh, that um, we pretty much closed. I'm just trying to read the price right now. Okay, the high, 28.75. We just made a new high for the year, 77.33.5. So how far can we go? I ran some projections and we can run for short term into the 77.60. So we're 30 points from the high, less than 30 points from the high from the 77.33. Uh, to making a new high. So NASDAQ making new highs. And we have pretty strong NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ components that are pressuring the market for higher. Definitely getting a little bit extended here from the 10 exponential and also from these uh, from this cluster uh, and a pullback into the uh, 7420, uh, 7422 is still going to be viable in case the market will decide to pull back. Now let's take it, uh, let's take it to the daily chart. Let's zoom in. You can see it right here. We have a steady grind and we have this really impressive uh, run off the 10 exponential moving average. So I would say that we still have uh, some room for uh, for a progression higher. You can see the high right here is 77.83. We still have some room for a progression higher. Like I said, 77.50 and 77.80 are going to be uh, are going to be um, are going to be our our go to areas for targets into Nasdaq. Uh, all right, so let's take it down to the hourly chart and let's see what we have in store. So 77.33 right here, we have the new high. That was the last week. That was that actually, um, that was set on Wednesday night. And then we have here, we have the price just grinding into this area, into the 77.15. So do we have room for higher? Yes, we do, the 77.50 and the 77.80. Let's move on to Russell. Russell has been lagging a little bit and it's not been uh, into full throttle mode. But the way I see it here, and I have been mentioning this for the last, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, three, to four, uh, three to four weeks or so, maybe more than that. So uh, we need to break over 1600. If we break over 1600, that's gonna be the uh, the go point for, uh, uh, for release higher back into uh, the 1650 and back into the 17 and 1750. It's gonna move probably in 50 point increments. 
the way it is setting up right now we have an inverse head and shoulder this being the neckline into the 1600 the sh right shoulder and the right shoulder into the 90s and the left shoulder into the 1450s this is going to be the head so this is a lot of pressure on price right here so if we break above 1600 still going to focus on it this week we may get a progression higher into the uh, target levels that i've uh, just mentioned daily charts daily charts I don't like the pressure that uh, the price is getting from this 200 simple moving average. We're just revisiting the 20 SMA right here and the price is caught between the 20, uh, 20 and the 50 and uh, the 10 and the 200 right here. You can see the price stuck here. Also, this is a lower high compared to this prior high right here that was already set. Uh, back into the 1610 zone so a lot of uh, a lot of pressure on price uh, into the 1600 so we trade over 1600 we may see uh, some more release of the buying pressure notice here how that 50 point increment is playing out because the support level is right here back into the 1550 so it's again 50, uh, 1600 I see it for a progression higher I do like it higher and uh, we're just gonna have to wait and see if we break the 1600 this is gonna be my focal point for to for this upcoming week all right let's move on to the hourly chart and the hourly chart is still into a lot of mess so we do have uh, we do have a golden cross here into the 80s as long as the golden cross uh, is going to be here this is gonna be a very turbulent level over 80 to 85 things are gonna be looking a little bit more bullish on the bullish side and as long as we're holding the 60s from this double bottom that we have uh, onto this hourly chart things are gonna look better if we break below 50 we're gonna come in a little bit more so if we break below 50 uh, uh, we may get a pullback back into the uh, 1525 and 1520 that's gonna be the next target level for uh, for Russell that I'm looking at let's check out some commodities let's check gold uh, gold has been trying to stabilize and it's trying to do a little bottoming of uh, a uh, bottom here uh, uh, into the 1272 but let's take it a little bit far back into the weekly charts so the weekly charts uh, I'm gonna take it a step back so I want to show you something uh, we're standing here on the 20 and the 10 exponential moving average into the 1270s 1270s to 1275 uh, is still support zone for the month from the monthly chart uh, as far as the weekly goes, uh, we had uh, we, we had a red week. We had a topping tail, continuation lower, but we're back into the support level into the 1275 from this prior revisit on the 10 exponential moving average back in on January 21st when the uh, when the move ignited higher. So uh, we will have to see if the, if this upcoming week is going to hold the uh, 1270 area, and if it's not going to hold the 1270 area, then a revisit back into the 60 may be possible this is a very strong support level and things may start to rotate between 70s and 60s let's take it to the four hour this time before we go into uh, into a smaller uh, smaller time frame Oops skipped one daily chart okay daily chart the 200 simple moving averages it at the 1260 zone uh, and if we get a progression lower here then this is going to become a buy zone as far as the price is concerned we trade above 85 83 to 85 again we're gonna uh, start to bounce higher okay let's take it to the four hour chart the four hour chart if we get the price to close above the 80s here this is going to be more encouraging and this is going to be on my side a buy zone for the price to continue higher back into the 1290s uh and possibly into the 1300 but 1295 is going to be a big target so far so i'm going to be looking for that uh development all right let's check out crude and see what's going on and uh let's take it back to the weekly chart in crude uh crude here established for the first time in a very long time a doji and in fact this is the uh we had we had a doji like effect here uh back in uh back at the beginning of march we had a doji here so not a lot of dojis and then the first doji off the support level into the 44 45 zone that was uh back on uh back into the last week of december so right now we had a progression higher doji so things are things are uh, we need to decide and the price needs to decide uh which uh which uh direction is going to move into this following week 
uh, the daily chart and I'm going to go to that very, uh, very soon. But I still want to point out the fact that we have hit this uh, very close to the 65 area. 65 area is a big target zone. It also, we also have these prior lows right here uh, that are sustaining that ceiling of resistance into the 65. Uh, so from this point on, things have not violated anything. So we're still looking strong. We still have support into the 6250. So we may still look for another leg higher. Daily charts not giving up. Daily chart has been coiling around the $64 uh, dollar zone since March 8th. So we have still uh, still coiling around this level. So we still do we still have room for a progression higher? We do. The only problem that we have here is this 65 level that you can see my cursor to the left hand side here. Uh, we have this prior pivot load that is putting a lot of selling pressure on price. One thing note that if we get a pullback back into the 62, I, I think that this is going to be a buy level back again. So we're going to have to watch it on a daily level day. Uh, we're going to have to take it one day at a time. All right. So with that being said, let's get to some hourly charts right here. Hourly charts, very messy. Not it's, this is a no touch for me from the uh, smaller time frame, uh, a smaller time frame um, as far as um, as far as this chart goes. So uh, we do have uh, the 200 and price is trading coiling around the 200 and uh, the 50 SMA is just coiling around that $64 area. To me, it's like a no touch. I'm just going to wait for a decision whether we're going to break the daily highs over 6480. Uh, this to me is going to be the go ahead for higher or if we're going to decide to pull back into the 62, uh, 6220 zone. All right. One thing that I want to bring is our Bob and that's the gasoline futures. And uh, we're going to take it back into the monthly chart here. And you can see that we had a pretty nice run. One, two, three, four months higher. The weekly chart, very nice progression higher. It's all already at $2.07 back into this cluster. Okay, back into this cluster. So we had a, a steady run down and a steady run up. And in fact, this is this is actually the fluentest move that we've had uh, in a very, very long time. Because look at the chop that we had back in July, October, uh, uh, November, December, all the way uh, all the way to uh, uh, this is 2017 through 2018. Uh, 2018 and April, and then st the price stabilized. And then from October, we just started to pull back. It's pretty much in sync with what the market did in general. And now rotating back higher, back into twin, to back into $2. Now, where are we gonna go from here? Okay, this is a pullback buy. We're just digesting the fact that we have not just pulled back uh, violently here to revisit uh, the 20 SMA or the $2.83 area uh, we're coiling at this area we're digesting these prior highs and this is a pullback buy off the 10 exponential that may release more buying pressure to a target of 212 and to a target of 220 okay so this is going to be uh, and in fact intraday it looks very uh, very appealing like if you're looking at the 15 minute chart so you do have a really nice a coil here between support resistance and then a release off support. So every support level is being bought. Notice here and notice here. So I'm going to take it back down to the early chart. All right, let's take a quick look at heating oil. All right, and uh, since we're into these energy uh, commodities, let's take it to the monthly chart. This is, and this is what drew my attention before I do before I did this analysis. I uh, I did a quick rundown through some charts, and that's why I decided to uh, do a, uh, an analysis on heating oil as well. Because to me, it looks like it's building a lot of uh, a lot of pressure, and this is a bull sandwich with release over two ten can take the price higher back into the 245 and even to 250. So this is uh, this is very interesting the way it is setting up on the monthly. The weekly charts trading into resistance, as you can see from these prior lows from last year in July all the way through August, and that's putting pressure on price. First doji here, uh, but notice that we still closed into the 50 simple moving average. And it released over 210, may bring more buying pressure, like I said, back into the 220, back into the 240, and back into the 250 as well. Let's check out bonds, and this is the 30-year bond. Uh, bonds have been 
pretty messy lately. I'm going to take it to the monthly chart. Bonds have been pretty messy. Um, of the monthly chart, uh, the monthly chart pulled in for, and basically we're into the first, uh, first uh, uh, 20 days of the month. Uh, and uh, we're revisiting back into support level. So there's no doubt about it that 146 is massive support right now. It is minor support for uh, for the bonds, so 146 level. Let's take it uh, back to the weekly chart. Weekly chart, very small doji here. So if the price is gonna break again over 147, this is gonna be a buy again with a continuation higher back into the 148 and back into the 149, possibly continuation higher. Let's take it to the daily chart. Daily chart already has rotated, and this was on Friday. So we have a full rotation here. We still have uh, we still have selling pressure coming from um uh, from uh, from this ten exponential moving average and from these prior lows. What mostly into the 147.13 to 147.15. We trade above this area. We're going to start to slowly progress higher. So uh, 146 still strong support level we break above 147 this is pretty much what i'm looking at 147 by 146 we can continue uh we can continue back into the 148 uh area 148 area is going to be again a strong area of resistance deriving from this prior pivot high back in april 10th uh set back in april 10th and also this prior high right here that is putting a lot of pressure on price uh because this is uh, the one thing that the price did not digest well uh, when it was trading, uh, when it was trading here. So this time around, so it started to grind up a little bit and then bam, it just got hit by this resistance, knocked that down. And the price is a, a very much, uh, uh, very, very technical move. All right. So this is pretty much it for today, guys. Uh, happy Easter and, uh, hope to see you next week. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email us at email uh, at uh, the following email, info at tradeoutloud.com. If you want to join our trading room where we day trade and swing trade futures and we also swing trade stocks, feel free to visit our website. Uh, it is tradeoutloud.com forward slash live trading room. We also have trading education and uh, day trading and swing trading education for stocks and futures. Feel free to visit our website for more information. Thank you so much, guys, and have a wonderful weekend.